My name is Aaron Schiller. I am a principal of Schiller Projects. We're an architecture and design consultancy, and we're based at 55 Hudson Yards. What we do is evidence-based design or research-based design. So we will go in and partner with a company for up to three months, study their workflows, their communication patterns, their tools, their meeting sizes, scales, and turn all that into a playbook. And from the playbook, we then develop an approach to space that doesn't try to remap the way a company works, but tries to map space tailored to the way a company is trying to work. From your position as an insider, how can people feel good and how will people feel about getting back to work? How will people feel about getting back to work? People are going to be thrilled at the opportunity to get back to work. There are all sorts of stressors we're working with helping companies deal with. Families in the house, dogs in the house, kids upstairs playing Fortnite. But there is an e eagerness to return to work. So if there's an eagerness to turn to work, how do we accommodate that? One opportunity we're seeing for people coming back to work is to come back into work in those tactical purposes. You know, we've all had to rethink our schedules. We're on Zoom calls, we're on uh, WebExes, we're on Skype all day long. And across the boards, what we're seeing in our research with companies is that people are busier now. They're doing more meetings, more calls to make up for the lost time. So, a tactical version of that is to start thinking about moving your teams back in on a scheduled base shifting. We're going to have team A and team B actually have project X and project X is going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then project X is going to go home and use Wednesdays to get that solo work done and come back, which again, doesn't change the, the amount of people you need in your space. It just changes the flow of people through your space. And it's going to give people in the near term, greater comfort to think, to not feel pressed upon the, in either um, accessing their elevator banks, accessing the building, accessing lunch. All of those services will be a little more managed, a little softer for now. Deliveries will increase. The, the way people wanna use, I think if to stick with the Hudson Yards as the center of focus, the way people wanna use the facility is only going to increase because everybody wants to get back to some feeling of normality and all of the things that they need for that. And, and, you know, Western society are encapsulated on some level in at least one or two of the buildings of Hudson Yards. The Hudson Yards for sure was imagined as something that was a responsive city, resilient. Your take on the city of the future. I think the bright lens is actually more, um, less built world, more operational world. So architecture is not just, the spaces, the form, the structure. It's the uses we bring to it. It's the uses we discover. Well, Hudson Yards not just has a uh, totally new and resilient facility, but the resilience here is not so much the heavy infrastructure, it's the soft tactics. It's the fact that the development here was always blended between commercial and residential research and retail. So I, I think the fact that Hudson Yards was envisioned as a clear community gives you two things. It gives you the capacity to listen and learn what's working for the occupants, what's not, what are their concerns, what can we bring to the table before people even return in mass, and then how can we adapt our strategy as people return and listen and, and, and work together as a community to the better comfort of all. I think it's an amazing opportunity that's there that no one else has the scale to deal with in terms of resources in New York.